Hello YouTubers, this is the Nubifier. I'm very excited to welcome you to my hands-on review of the new Verpal Alpha Grips. I've been using them exclusively in Star Citizen since the 4th of February 2020 in an attempt to find their positives and negatives. I've been testing different bindings, playing with the configuration software, testing basic flight performance, dogfighting, mining, landing, taking off, and of course atmospheric flight. The reason this review is 5 days after I receive the product is that when I make a review for the community I am aware that people will choose to buy or not to buy based on it. Two grips in this price range are an investment and it's best that you have as much information as possible. I mainly focus on very high end gear so one would expect that the build quality, performance and function at this level are also very high. In this market, at this price bracket, we as consumers should expect the very best, and it is possible for a company to aggressively refine a product through feedback and experience. Let's begin. This product is a combination of the Constellation Delta Grip and the MT50 CM2 Grip. I have the Alpha Grips placed between them to illustrate that point. Verpal did something quite odd when they first launched their MT50 set. As a brand new company, much to the shock of the hardcore flight sim pilots, they released a mirrored set with a left and right grip option. They were looking to hit the developing space sim market. At the time, and even now, it seems to be a great idea with no negatives. The hardcore flight sim pilot can buy a right-handed grip and a gimbal. The space sim pilot can get a matched set left and right with gimbals. The MT-50 had no twist axis, which was okay at the time because I relied on the five-way for up, down, left, right, exactly as I did with the dual Warthog setup. It had a flip-down trigger and a brake lever. This was a clear step up from what I was used to, and it was my first exposure to a great gimbal. The Delta was announced as the product that would break the mold and appeal primarily to space sim pilots. It would have a twist, a mouse wheel, and an analog mini stick, which seemed like sorcery at the time. We went from 4 doff to 10 doff all at once, and despite having an odd looking ambidextrous design, they became my daily driver, and I know that many of you adopted these as well. To recap, MT50 launched a matched mirrored set of grips with a ton of buttons, and Delta introduced mouse rollers, analog mini stick, RGB lighting, and the Z-axis. The Alpha is back to that mirrored left and right grip, but with everything in one slick package. When we first saw the teaser shots, some had commented that they didn't like the design. I had reservations myself until I got them in hand. They do look a little bit like the head of the main protagonist from a certain classic movie about aliens. When mounted up as part of your desk, I believe you're going to be less bothered by the aesthetics, and they've actually grown on me. I'm going to compare the Alpha Grip to the Warthog Grip, which is 1kg and metal, because many consider that to be the gold standard for quality. If you consider the Warthog Grip from an engineering perspective, adding a bunch of weight atop a spring-loaded pendulum does introduce some mechanical drawbacks. The further into deflection that you go, the harder that the spring system needs to work to recenter the controller. By using a progressive cam like what you would use to simulate a plane would counter this better, but space sim pilots tend to prefer a planar or flat force curve. That profile became known as Cosmos M Profile, with a minimal center hump and a flat curve. The Alpha Grip is half the weight of the Warthog at just over 500 grams. Normally, once the weight is supported by the gimbal, being lighter or heavier becomes less apparent and it just comes down to the quality of the grip. Doing a little bit of research, the grip is injected molded in a thick polyurethane plastic that has a solid feel. Pulling on both triggers has an audible click, but you don't get that hollow sound of a less expensive joystick. After a minute, the casting reaches your body temperature and the grip shape has a natural relief that conforms to your fingers. The updated adjustable wrist support fine tunes your grip to accommodate many hand shapes, and then they also moved all the hat switches within easy reach. My wrist support is set to three quarters of the way up, and I have normal sized hands. Just like the CM2 throttle, there's a comfortable diamond pattern grip, no sharp edges, and the panel gaps are okay. The trigger, flip trigger, and brake lever are all metal finished, in a darker shiny gunmetal, again all within easy reach. The threaded metal collar is anodized black and is attached through the Z-axis mechanism. It has an updated diamond knurling pattern, similar to the grip, to help you tighten and loosen it. There's only one red button and a transparent trim for the accent lighting that looks grey. You can achieve a near monochromatic look of silver, black and grey if you leave the accent lights disabled. The RGB lighting effect can illuminate three levels of brightness from barely there to quite visible. Maximum brightness won't illuminate your room or keyboard, and you can choose from scales of white, green, red, blue, cyan or magenta. The bindings are the main source of hype associated with this product. There are lots of them and as I said they're all within comfortable reach. I'd like to start with the trigger as it's pretty interesting as far as an implementation. 
It's comprised of two parts, a flip trigger and a two-stage trigger. The flip trigger has two binds, and the main trigger also has two binds for a total of four per hand. Binding number one is active when the flip trigger is stored up and goes off when it's flipped down. This can be used for anything to activate safety for weapons, change modes, turn on and off lights, or for landing gear. Binding number two is active when the flip trigger is pulled, with a nice click that can be felt and is slightly audible. Binding number three and four are the two stages of the main trigger that work like any other joystick. The first stage occurs almost immediately when pulled, and the second happens at the end of the pull when the trigger bottoms out. If you keep pulling the flip trigger past binding two, you'll progressively hit three and then four, resulting in a three-stage trigger. I think this is really cool, and once we have more than two weapons groups in Star Citizen, this might actually turn out to be a major bonus. Bind number five is the push button associated with the analog mini stick. Binding number six is the push button opposite to it. Number seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven is the middle five-way castle switch. Number 12 is the red button. Number 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 is the five-way pyramid switch. Number 18, 19, 20 is the side-mounted three-way. 21 is the mouse wheel push binary. 22 is left blank. 23 and 24 are the mouse wheel binary encoders, which can be set to fine-tune mining laser output, modulate zoom, or anything that has a plus-minus reset. Number 25, 26, 27, 28, 29 is the five-way thumb switch. Number 30 is the lower pinky switch, which I use for Discord push to talk, and this is bound on both hands, so I can still talk easily when doing something else like typing or using the mouse. And binding number 31 is the binary bind that's on the brake lever, which also has an analog axis. The analog bindings are the analog brake lever, the analog thumb switches, which is X and Y, plus the Z twist axis. Like other Verpal grips, the Z is built right into the handle, with a good centering mech and a solid return spring. So if you're running two alphas and factor in the gimbals, you have 12 bindable axes, six five-way hat switches, two three-way hat switches, 12 buttons, and eight trigger stages at your disposal without moving or breaking grip in both hands. It's insanity. Mine are a pre-release pair without serial numbers and I was asked very nicely to not do what I normally do and expose the interior for the exposed video series. Verpal expressed that mine may not be the final or representative of what you'll get internally, so I respect their wishes. I imagine that it would be very similar to their newest grips with the updated blue printed circuit boards and favoring screws over hot glue. I'd like to get this information out to you even if I need to buy a third one in the future for testing. I know from the social media traffic that I wasn't alone when Verpal made the announcement of the Alpha with that darkened picture that didn't really show anything. I became interested and excited about what this would provide us the more we saw it. Delta had fewer buttons than the MT-50, and it wasn't just the reduced number, but also the type, including the brake, the thumb pad, the push to talk, and the three-way side rocker. Delta brought thumb switch, mouse wheel, and twist, which were much better suited for space and pilots, despite those drawbacks that were caused by the upgrade. So today I can confirm that they have seamlessly combined everything that we wanted in a single pair of grips. I found that there are adequate bindings just on the grips alone to have all of the targeting, weapons, power, defense, scanning, communications, thruster, throttle and acceleration limits, plus view. That's quite a statement and I know that I just reviewed the CM2 throttle, which would in fact add even more options. The reason I said that is if you're on the verge of upgrading your controllers, Consider just getting the gimbals and grips, and in the future, if you decide that you need more, that's when you invest in the throttle or the button box. As we get more features and requirements, it's nice to know that everything's within reach, and we've seen the teases for the button box that expands the throttle even more. I'm not partnered with them in any capacity beyond a guy who makes videos for you, so I have no insider information on any of the release schedules. Hopefully I'm given an opportunity to review it, especially if I can saturate the current bindings at my disposal. Don't forget, I'm going to include external MFDs like Game Glass, a point of view tracker like Track IR, or a voice to macro like Voice Attack to complete my perfect setup suggestions. Please watch for that in the future. Many of you had asked for a point to point rundown of the Warbird gimbal and the CM2 gimbal. This is coming soon as well. And that's it. I hope that this answered all of your questions, but I'm happy to cover any of your concerns in the comments if you have them. I tried very hard to get this information out to you in a timely manner so that you could decide for yourself if Alpha is right for you. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. I ask you to share the video to anyone who may be interested. That helps me a lot. My thanks to Verpal once again for allowing me to review their products. This is a community supported channel that offers ad free content. Fly safe and I'll see you in the verse.